What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday, and if you've been following me this summer, every Friday we do a mock draft for y'all. 2019 fantasy football mock draft to help you prep for your 2019 fantasy football real draft. We do this on draft.com every single Friday. If you are not on draft.com, you are not prepping correctly for your 2019 fantasy football season. Head over to draft.com. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You will get free $3. You will get $3. You don't get a free $3. I don't know how the fuck that would make sense. But you'll get $3 to draft with. And you'll be set to draft. I apologize for any of the texts that come through throughout the entirety of this video. Let me pull up the draft that I just did. Um, I always do these drafts with my subscribers. Whoever is following me. So when you sign up on draft.com and you use my promo code, you can add me. My username is right here, Nick Ercolano. And uh, then you will be my friend. Hey, Max got in here. Animal got in. Uh, my editor, Scott, got in. He's got the 101. So this is going to be a 12-team half PPR mock draft. I'm picking from the 10 spot. That's interesting. I like that. I'm starting to like the, uh, the back half of the first round because shit is getting messy up top, boys. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, man. Training camp is in full swing. Speaking of, we're drinking out of my poop cup, my coffee today. A lot of caffeine intake today because I was up all night last night watching the Amazon show All or Nothing. If any of you guys are not familiar with it, here's the big facts. If you watch Hard Knocks, Hard Knocks is fun, but imagine Hard Knocks was narrated by John Hamm, the actor John Hamm. Yes, that's what All or Nothing is. So All or Nothing is very similar to Hard Knocks. They take an NFL team and they follow them, but it's throughout the regular season. So they filmed all of last year and then they released it all at once so you can kind of binge watch it. And that's what I'm watching right now is the Carolina Panthers in 2018. It's cool seeing because you already know what happened. Obviously, Hard Knocks is training camp, but All or Nothing is the regular season. So go check out All or Nothing. I'm obviously not getting paid to promote that. But let's see what we got here. We got Saquon Barkley, 101. This is half PPR again. C-Mac, Kamara, Devontae Adams, Ezekiel Elliott, David Johnson, 106. DeAndre Hopkins, 107. Holdouts, holdouts, yes. Am I concerned about Zeke? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned. As we move further and further along in the offseason, these guys like Zeke and Melvin Gordon will be moving down my board. I can't predict what's going to happen. I don't know if they're going to get a contract done. So you guys can stop asking me if he's going to get a contract. How the fuck would I know? I'm not either of their agents, right? 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 So with the holdouts, I would say just do the do the normal thing. And as, as we get further along in the summer, start moving them down your draft boards. Would I take Zeke right now at the 104? Probably not. Each day that goes by, the less I like him at that 104 spot. So Max, the animal, knows what to do. He knew to take Adams there. He's getting smart. We're scared because this guy at the top right here, Le'Veon Bell, put a hammer to all the front office's great minds that won't pay these running backs, and uh, now they're pissed. And now we have to be worried about that. So I'm here at the 110, and at the back of the first round, if you guys watched my early round strategy video, I will be targeting these wide receivers. Now, I want to talk about all of these, these mock drafts I do on Fridays. One, they're not actually mock drafts because you put... There are dollar drafts. And some people are like, why would you pay for a mock draft? It's not. If you come in the top three places, you end up winning money back. So it is like a real league. But if you're unfamiliar with best ball, it's a lot of fun. All you do is draft. You don't make any in-season moves, no waiver wire moves, no trades. So it's helping you practice for your draft and seeing different trends of where players are going. When you put a dollar in, obviously everyone takes the draft very seriously. There's no kickers and no defense. So this is the most accurate um, ADP drafting that you'll probably find on the interwebs right now. Please don't snipe Michael Thomas from me. But um, go to draft.com or download the draft app on your phone, iOS, Google, whatever. Use promo code BDGE. Throw in 10 bucks, and you can literally do 10 drafts before your actual draft in August or September, whenever it is. It is the number one prep for your draft. You will be able to see where guys are getting targeted, etc., etc., etc. Um, and when you use promo code BDGE, you'll get $3 on top of that. Best ball starts the best players every week, and your starting lineup is one quarterback two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end. So will you draft differently? Yes. Let me explain some of the differences because a lot of you guys ask, oh, you always do best ball drafts. Ah, great fucking pick with Nick Chubb. Duke Johnson, right before I started taping this, was traded to the Houston Texans, and we are going to get into that in depth in a minute. 
So Michael Thomas fell to me. Now, if you read my Big Dogs Gotta Eat Bible, which is a very expansive piece that I write on actual draft strategy, very in-depth at every position, which is in the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com, on sale right now, help you prep for your draft. Uh, I talked about drafting at the end of the round, right? If you're in picks 107, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever, you, you tend to minimize risk over the first three rounds of the draft, right? Minimizing risk would normally be taking two wide receivers back to back, right? Just like I did. I took Odell and then I took Michael Thomas. Both of those guys feel very safe. You'll feel very good about having them in your lineup. I also think they're a great um, mixture of ceiling and floor because Odell's range of outcomes is definitely the wide receiver one. Michael Thomas's floor is probably like the wide receiver five or six. But in best ball, the reason I'm okay with taking two wide receivers, in the video I put out on Wednesday, I talked about how you probably want to take at least one running back within your first two picks because the overall running back depth, like the overall running back landscape in fantasy football this year is really, 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 really shallow. And we have all these third round guys, the Damian Williams, um, Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry, all dealing with muscle strains now, which could be very, very serious. Um, which can be very serious, right? So that, you know, hurts their value. And it gets, it gets messy. So you kind of do have to reach up and take a running back within the first two rounds, in my opinion. However, in best ball, since it automatically starts all the best running backs at the position, you can take your two wide receivers up top and still pile up like five or six running backs, right? And still have depth there and still get production because you don't actually have to choose when to start each guy's each week. So in best ball, I'm okay doing double wide receiver off the bat. In season long drafts, I'm probably more likely to grab a guy like... Um, Odell or Julio or Michael Thomas, whoever, you know, I get at the, at the end of the first round and then pair him with a Joe Mixon or a Nick Chubb or even a Dalvin Cook or something. And it obviously depends on who you like at the spot. So we saw, I grabbed Michael Thomas, Todd Gurley at the 204. I can't, can't co-sign that. Le'Veon Bell, Dalvin Cook, Carrion Johnson. Wow, Carrion at the 207 already. Love that. Mike Evans, James Conner, Aaron Jones at the 210 with a pulled hamstring. I can't recommend that either. Guys, you got to really, really monitor these camp reports. Damien Williams at the 211. Let's talk about Damien Williams a little bit, man. Damien Williams scares the shit out of me right now because we heard Andy Reid come out, right? And he started putting Damien Williams on the spot a little bit. He's like, he's missed two times. He's back up. He's missed too much time. These backups are really doing their thing right now. And it seems like Damien Williams was gone for 10 days with a hamstring pull. It's possible that it was a very, very minor injury, but we've talked to Dr. Morse enough about hamstrings that we know the optimal timetable for returning from a hamstring pull is really between, you know, three and four weeks, three and five weeks sometimes. So um, with that being said, I feel like he pushed it back really early just because Andy Reid is coming out and saying these things. Dr. Morse, when I tweeted him, at, I tweeted this at him yesterday, and my pick's going to come up in a second. Uh, we're going to go through some of my tweets, actually. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, Nick underscore BDGE, because I'm always tweeting out nugs, little golden nuggets about fantasy. Mm, good pick on T.Y. Hilton right there. I kind of wanted him, even though we don't really know about Andrew Luck's deal. So I have two wide receivers already. I, I don't see a lot of, I don't see a lot, if any value. Man, running back is fucking ugly right now. I'm not dipping into the third round to take a guy like David Montgomery, even though I like him. And y'all know I hate Devonta Freeman. Um, so I'm going to have to settle for a wide receiver. I'll go with Keenan Allen consistency. So my top three wide receivers right now, Michael Thomas, Odell, Keenan Allen. I'll have to stack up running backs later on in the draft. And there's a little bit more depth at running back. Like overall and season long, it's tough because guys like, you know, um, James White or Tariq Cohen, pass catching backs lose a lot of value in season long leagues because the opportunity cost of having to choose when to actually start them, when to actually sit and start them, make it very, 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 very difficult. Um, the top three tight ends are off the board, and I want to cover that in a second as well. So Keenan Allen, David, like David Montgomery in the third round is just way too high for me. I was okay with him at uh, like the back end of the fourth. Like we always say, guys, we we don't hate players we hate their adps we hate their draft capital Ooh, i hope stefan diggs falls to me right here i will start with four wide receivers off the rip no problem and then not have to draft a lot for you know until the eighth or ninth round i just i just don't see any value at the running back position man i can't get on board with devonta freeman or mark ingram in the fourth round i mean maybe devonta freeman in the fourth round just because i have i don't think i have a single share of devonta freeman really 
And I know, I, listen, like reports out of camp, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Devonta Freeman here. Please forgive me, Big Dog Nation. Reports out of camp have been saying that, you know, Devonta Freeman is the clear one. Everyone else is, is battling for the RB2 role. My problem is like last time Devonta Freeman was the RB1, he was still only getting like 16, 17 touches a game tops. Like he was not a 25 touch per game guy. Um, so I think that part of his career is over. He's not getting a featured workload because he gets injured so often. My concern is more with injuries. And they did revamp the offensive line, but our first round pick, Caleb McGarry, is now out with like a heart condition. Hopefully he gets back by the regular season. But this is going to be a pass offense. This is not going to be a run offense. And I think whoever gets the second spot, whether it's Brian Hill, who's a great dynasty pickup right now, or if it's Ido Smith, they're going to be very involved in the pass, pass down role. So um, I'll grab Devonta Freeman only because he fell. He usually doesn't fall to like the fourth round, and I don't have any running backs right now. But I didn't fucking enjoy making that pick, all right? So do not. I don't want to hear it in the comments. Speaking of, I would love if y'all just scroll down real quick and hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video thus far, because that's how YouTube lets other people know that it's a good video and you're helping your boy grow a little bit, right? Everyone's coming onto YouTube now, Pro Football Focus and all these bigger channels and shit, and now I'm competing with them. And it ain't that easy to compete with them as, a, I mean, we're the big dogs, they're really realistically the small dogs, but for being realistic, you know, like... Uh, the subscriber base ain't, ain't, what, uh, ain't, ain't what these other following counts got. So the way you can help me out is by going down there, hitting the thumbs up button. If you leave a comment, YouTube, you know, they hit that algorithm and they're like, hey, people, uh, people engage with this kid's videos. They're pretty good. Let's show them to other people. If we show them to other people, he'll grow. He'll make more money. He could sustain his living. And then I can make more videos for y'all. So it's just a sick cycle. So go hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing mock drafts every Friday, but we're dropping other fantasy football videos five days per week. Sign up on draft.com if you want to draft with me. Use promo code BDGE. Let's talk about the twatter. So um, I tweeted at Dr. Morse, friend of the channel. Let me go bring up the tweets that we had. Um, So I tweeted at him. Damian Williams returns to practice after 10 days of rest. Dealt with a hamstring injury. Seems like a quick timetable to return. Hope he's not pushing himself too early because of Andy Reid's comments earlier this week. These next few days will be huge for Damian Williams' health. And uh, I know I'm only technically a doctor, but I wanted to fact check with um, with the doc. I said, is this a good take or am I lying to the big dogs? He said he's likely returning faster than he should because he's afraid of losing his job to Hyde. Bad look. Would not be surprised if he re-injures it over the next three weeks. Book it. That is not encouraging. Dr. Morris has been fucking on point with not predicting injuries, but the return timetables that he gives us usually end up being really solid. And if players come back too early, this is the problem. So we're fading Damien Williams right now, late second, early third, unless we're hearing really good reports coming back out of camp that he is the exclusive number one. A.J. Green in the fifth round, horrible pick, Rear Admiral. He was not a good pick before all this foot nonsense, and now it's just it's just getting worse and worse by the day. I would put money that he ends up on the pup list, misses the first six weeks of the season, and at that point, you can't draft a guy in the top five rounds that's going to be on the pup. You probably can't draft him within the first eight or nine rounds. He's a double-digit pick for me right now, AJ Green. Don't at me. I don't care about upside. I don't care about that fake upside that he doesn't have anymore. Um, so, see a string of wide receivers go off in the fifth round. A.J. Green, Mike Williams, Kenny Galladay. Ooh, I like Galladay in the fifth round there from Animal. Um, Evan Ingram is shooting up boards. He has shot up to my tight end four with all the wide receiver nonsense going on. D.J. Moore, Tyler Boyd, Tariq Cohen. So I am on the board. I am on the clock. Who do we have to pick from? Uh, Calvin really dealing with the hamstring. That is kind of nerve-wracking for you, boy. I Man, I just hate all of the value that is currently on the board right now. <sighs> You really kind of screw yourself when you don't go with any running backs early on. And I put myself in a position. Look, I know I'm not a fan of Mark Ingram, but a lot of the times when I said I didn't want to draft Ingram, it was because his ADP on draft was like, uh, it was almost at like pick 40, right? If you go back to my do not draft running backs video, his ADP on draft was pick 40. Right now, I got him at what, pick 60 pretty much? So listen, if I'm being objective, I don't like Mark Ingram as a talent. I mean, I do. I think he's a good running back. I think he uh, was exponentially helped by um, the fact that he was on the Saints running behind that offensive line. I really like Justice Hill. So, 
Normally, I don't take Mark Ingram, but I, again, I don't own a lot of shares of him. So this is a very diverse draft for me. Devonta Freeman, Mark Ingram, not my ideal fourth and fifth round picks. But if I'm looking at it objectively, I understand the arguments for Mark Ingram. This is the single most run-heavy team in the NFL. They ran the single most offensive plays last year in the NFL. They had almost like 65 more plays run than the Patriots, who were second, which is almost a full game of offensive snaps. A, a, a typical NFL team runs between like 60 and 70 snaps. So that was pretty much a full extra game that the Ravens had, which is crazy because they run the ball so heavily, you think time would kind of go off the clock. Ah, oh, good snipe with Deshaun Watson. Good, 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 good snipe. So I was going to go with Deshaun Watson, and he is probably moving up to my quarterback too, and I'll explain why in a second. So with this seventh round or sixth round pick, I would normally, I'm probably going to take another a quarterback because I want an elite quarterback. I say this every, every week, week in and week out. In best ball, late round quarterback is not a good strategy because you don't get to play the waiver wire. The reason you like doing late round quarterbacks in season long is because if they bust, you could just hit the waiver wire and there's six other good guys to pick from. You don't make waiver wire moves in best ball. So I'm going Aaron Rodgers. The quarterback situation gets messy here because Luck is dealing with a calf strain that's clearly serious because he's been dealing with it for like four fucking months now. So he's dropping a quarterback four for me. Aaron Rodgers, still up there. I mean, he's right there with Watson. Watson now gets Duke Johnson. So let's talk about this trade. What are my thoughts on the trade? Someone asked me this on the Twitter. Again, make sure you are following me on Twitter. Um, Nick underscore BDGE if you're not already. Thoughts on Duke Johnson getting traded to the Texans. So my thoughts. Lamar Miller officially dead. Do I think he has absolutely no value? No, but... He was always like a safe floor play, right? You didn't pick Miller for a ceiling. Safe floor play. Now he he was like a low, low end RB2, middling flex play at best. Yes, I know he had a pretty good season last year, but there was like four games that you realistically were able to use him, right? He had like a three-point game, then a six-point game, then a 26-point game, which you probably weren't even starting him in your lineup at that point. So yeah, you could use all the cute end of season stats if you want, but Miller didn't help no one do shit. Now with Duke Johnson coming in, Duke Johnson realistically is, it's like, he's a back that can contribute more than just a pass catching role. Like, I understand that that's the only role he played in Cleveland, but 5'9", 207, he's not small. 4'5", four, 4 four speed is good. He's a great pass catcher, but he was also a great runner in college at Miami. So we we know that he could actually be, um, I, I'm not going to say he's going to be the workhorse, but he could take carries away from Lamar, Lamar Miller. And Lamar Miller was barely a floor play to begin with. He barely scored touchdowns. So Lamar Miller is like, I'm taking Duke Johnson as a value play wherever you can get him later on in the draft over, um, I, I mean, I'm taking Duke Johnson in the, in the double digit rounds of drafts over Lamar Miller in the seventh, eighth round for sure. So when I say he's dead, he's still probably going to get like 160, 170 carries, but that's not really a value, uh, you know, because you're not going to get any passing down work anymore. and You barely get goal line runs anyways. So Demarie Crockett was a guy I said I liked in that backfield as a dynasty player. Um, I still think he is a good bet to start taking carries away from Lamar Miller as well because Crockett's a guy who fit in exactly where Deonta Foreman's role would have been, right? He's a bigger back, 5'10", 225, 80th percentile speed score. So he's pretty fast for his size, best comparable player to Isaiah Crowell. So if Lamar Miller is let go next year, I could totally see Crockett being the early down guy, pairing with Duke Johnson. The trade for Duke Johnson, I believe, was a fourth round pick, conditional pick that could, that could potentially... Woo! Potentially move up to a um, potentially move up to a third round pick. So Crockett, I still think is a hold in dynasty. Nick Chubb is going to fucking eat this year. We already knew that. Now on their roster, what do they have at running back? They have literally like if you look at depth charts. If you go to Roto World, you can look at their depth charts. I'm almost up again in the draft. Oh, you know what? Animal's having a good draft. I think the sixth round is really fucking early for MVS, man. People just jump on any player. They don't. People just forget about value. But I'm MVS, I'm a big fan of him. I think sixth round is a little fucking crazy, Animal. You piece of shit. I'm just mad because you got him and I didn't. Curtis Samuel, I absolutely fucking love that pick too. There is a lot of, a lot of good... Ooh, God, Lamar Miller in the seventh. Did you not see the breaking news, my guy? That's like where he was going prior to the Duke Johnson trade. Curtis Samuel. Ooh, ooh. My breakout wide receiver video is coming on Monday, I believe. I might even drop it tomorrow. I'm not sure. Probably Monday, but we talk about Curtis Samuel, who I love this year. 
So I'm back up on the clock. I got my quarterback, Andrew Luck, falling to quarterback all the way down here. Fuck, I wish I didn't take Aaron Rodgers there and took Andrew Luck down here, but how am I supposed to know? Um, tight ends, who is left on the board? Sorry, I'm also looking at it through my phone because there's a lot of... Uh, I'm actually going to grab Eric Ebron here. And this is not a pick that I normally make either. Here's how I see Eric Ebron. Make the pick, bro. Okay, they took Dante Pettis for me. I don't know why. This I have so much, so many programs running on my computer that it always slows down. I apologize. So I would do it through your phone if you have it. The only time I do it on my computer is when I'm screen recording for y'all. Um, Dante Pettis I don't hate at all either, except there's really weird reports that just came out that he's running with the twos. Um... Pettis said he now weighs 197. I know I'm a little slimmer, so that's something I've been trying to work on, just gaining a little more weight. Why are you slimmer? Oh, no, you probably gained weight from last year. I was about to say, what the, f the, f what the frick are you doing, Dante? So right now, we got a strong team, uh, especially at wide receiver. So I'm probably going to fade wide receiver for a while. I meant to grab Ebron. Hopefully he falls to me here, and I'll explain why. He's not a guy I absolutely love. But he's a good best ball option because, again, you don't have to decide when to sit or start someone. If you want to draft with me, if you want to practice and see who you can draft at certain times for your actual drafts to prep, draft.com, the draft app, draft.com slash BDGE. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. Don't snipe me. Hey, let me check the running back values real quick. Not much I like at running back, so we are going to go with Eric Ebron here. And I want to finish my analysis on the Houston Texans situation. So, Nick Chubb is going to eat. We already knew that. On their roster right now, what do they have at running back? It's literally Kareem Hunt's obviously out for the first eight games. Nick Chubb, stop me when you hear a running back that you actually know. Dontrell Hillard, Trayon Gray, Ernest Johnson. So, I'm looking at these guys, and I'm like, who can play a role? Like, is Nick Chubb going to be given that pass-catching role? It raises his floor, obviously raises his ceiling too. I'm assuming he's going to catch more passes. I already talked about this in my must-own running backs video. If you missed that one, we went in on Chubb. We loved him prior. Now we love him even more. He's a back-end first-round pick now for me, probably early second-round pick. My rankings will be updated, which you can only get in my draft guide on BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Make sure you go check that out after this video. Go cop. It's everything you need for your 2019 fantasy football draft prep, along with mock drafting with me on the draft app. So I'm looking like, who are these guys? First of all, I actually don't know who Trayon Green is, but Trayon Gray. Um, Dontra Hillard becomes a name to know in Cleveland, backfield for Dynasty. When you look at this kid, Dontrell Hillard. Let's bring him up. I'm saying, like, who can take this pass catching role? Maybe they add someone else to the backfield. Who knows? 5'11", 202. So he's got that pass catching role size, right? He's not 225, but he's also not like 180. So he's not like a scat back. 4'47 speed. Very good, no matter what size you are. 65th percentile for college dominator. So we know that he ran the ball really well in college. College target share in the 74th percentile. So you know the kid can catch the ball. That is what we're looking for. Good size, good speed, pass catching resume. If there is a favorite to win that pass catching role in the Cleveland backfield, if they decide not to give it all to Chubb, it is Dontrell Hilliard. Dontrell Hilliard, go grab him in your dynasty leagues right now. And hopefully... Um, he can uh, give you some value over the first few weeks of the season. He'll probably be relegated out of that role once Kareem Hunt comes back. But let's look at Trayon Gray. I haven't seen Trayon Gray. They don't even... Eh, did I spell that wrong? They don't even have him on player profile. That's when you know you're fucked as a player. 6'1", 233. That's a big boy. He was a fullback. Okay, so he's not doing shit. Um, and then I talked about Duke Johnson going to Houston. I, I did say I liked him as a value. I would rather take Duke in the 11th or 12th over... Um, Duke in the 11th or 12th over Lamar Miller. What I will say is I'm not going to go crazy about it because here's why. I'm trying to fucking find the tweet I put out. Okay, so this is what I said. Chicken or the egg, right? Deshaun Watson as a quarterback threw to his running backs last year 15% of the time. So target share for running backs, 15%. Only Tampa Bay threw the ball to their running backs at a lower rate. So I'm saying maybe it was just the year. Maybe he wasn't comfortable with the running backs. Then we look back at his rookie year, right? And rookie year is a t I feel like when you're a rookie, you're looking for quick, quick dump offs. You're trying to get the ball out of your hands quickly. You don't want to feel that pressure. Even then, he only threw his running back 17% of the time in the seven starts that he made for Houston, which was the seventh lowest rate in the NFL. So 
Watson doesn't throw to his running backs. Yes, you can make the argument. Maybe they didn't have a pass-catching running back, but it's not like Lamar Miller was had bad hands. It wasn't like Lamar Miller couldn't be trusted to catch the ball. So when I'm looking at it, it just seems like they don't throw the ball to the running back or Deshaun Watson doesn't. And I saw someone tweet out like, so, this was a ridiculous tweet. Let me see. Um, by the way, am I still in on Kiki QT? Yes. Give me, I hope that pushes his ADP down further. Give me all the Kiki QT in the ninth round, which is where we're about to be in our draft. I hope if he's still available right now, I will fucking cop that. All. Oh, no, he went in the eighth round. Good pick, Moisty. Where are we at, though? I'm going to refresh his page right quick. I got to X out of some, uh, some things. So I got the app open. I'll draft on here, and it'll load in a second. Uh, so we got one quarterback, one side end. I'm good there. Running backs and wide receivers on the board. The top running backs are Corey Dave, uh, Ronald Jones. Pey- I can't believe Peyton Barber's still going after fucking Ronald Jones, people. Stop doing that. I'm going to go with Peyton Barber here, and I will reload this page. Sorry. Let me make sure that the interwebs are connected. So they already announced that Peyton Barber is a starter. He's going to work with the ones on their first preseason game. So this was setting up just like last year when everyone said, Ronald Jones, Ronald Jones, Ronald Jones. And the team was literally telling us that Peyton Barber was a starter. I went back because in my Monday's breakout wide receiver video, I wanted to break down Godwin. Do we think he's going to break out this year? Do we think the hype is too high? You're going to have to find out in Monday's video. But I was rewatching the games because what I wanted to see were those games in which either Mike Evans or Deshaun Jackson didn't play. Chris Godwin has had a lot of big games, but he had two fucking terrible games last year in weeks 14 and 15. It was the Saints and it was the um, Ravens back to back in which he was terrible. So I I went back on NFL Game Pass and I watched both games to break down what happened. One of the games, uh, the game against the Saints when he got like 10 targets and caught one ball, six or seven of them were erratic passes by Winston. He couldn't have done it. The other one, anyways, I'm getting back to the point. Peyton Barber, I promise you, is not as bad as you think he is. He is going to surprise a lot of people and he's going to get the majority of the work in this backfield. I can't wait till Melvin Gordon gets traded to Tampa Bay tonight and I look like a fucking asshole on my video tomorrow. Um, I kind of want to take... What do we got here at running back? All right, so what I did, I went with Corey Davis here. Um, Corey Davis is a guy I've been fading for a long time, but that was only because he was like a 6th, 7th, 8th round pick. I'll take him in the 10th round. <clears throat> He's still a very talented wide receiver. A.J. Brown, I thought, was really going to push him for work, but A.J. Gra- AJ Brown has missed almost the entire summer so far with a hamstring pull. Um, so Corey Davis looks to be the de facto one again. Um, rookies who miss most of that first, you know, miss the summer with a hamstring pull or something, and it rarely ever works out well for them. And Corey Davis is an example of that. He struggled his rookie year because he missed most of that first summer with a hamstring pull. So Corey Davis has my wide receiver five in the 10th round. Absolutely okay with. Also, I'm fine going with a ton of wide receivers because you start three as compared to two running backs. So I will always own more wide receivers in these best ball drafts. What was I talking about? (laughs) Okay, Eric Ebron. In the Big Dogs draft guide, One of the features is that we have Dr. Jesse Morse writing up injury reports for every semi-injury player. And this is what the draft guide looks like. It's a private website, pretty much. You have to pay to get access to it, of course. Um, BigDogDraftGuide.com, as you can see up here. Season-long analysis. One of the key features is Dr. Morse injury reports. Go to tight end. Eric Ebron is on there. Jack Doyle is on there. Eric Ebron's. Um, I literally just put my hand over the computer to help, like make sure that you couldn't see OJ Howard's because I'm like, oh, you know what? You have to pay to see that. Y'all don't see my fucking hand on the screen. That's incredible. Good job, Nick. Love that. So he has Eric Ebron's injury risk at a three out of 10. He has Jack Doyle's as a seven out of 10, a high re-injury risk. And I won't go into the exact analysis on why, but you can go cop that on Big Dog Draft Guide if you want to hear about every somewhat injured player going into 2019. It is one of the most helpful resources that you will be able to get um, all offseason. And he rates the players 1 to 10 on what their re-injury risk is. So, listen, we know this. Andrew Luck throws to his tight ends at an absurd rate, especially near the end zone. We saw why Eric Ebron was so good last year, and that is exactly why. This time around, Jack Doyle, again, is a very big injury risk. If Doyle gets hurt, if he's not ready, Ebron, again, is going to be a top five tight end in fantasy. So I like him 
in the ninth round, right, where he keeps dropping to. And I love him in best ball because he is a guy that he might be touchdown dependent. If Doyle ends up playing, Eric Iran probably becomes touchdown dependent, which is fine when you're in best ball because, again, you don't have to decide when to draft people, when not to draft people. So uh, I'm not going to say I'm back in on Eric Ebron, but again, we look at values. We don't look at players. There is always every man has a price, right, people? Again, guys, all I ask is that if you're enjoying the video, um, hit that thumbs up button. If I'm annoying the fuck out of you, hit that thumbs up button, which means that if 15,000 people watch this video, I should have 15,000 thumbs up. I understand I'm really fucking annoying. I'm sorry. You know, it's hard to talk for an hour straight about fantasy football. Um, and speaking of tight ends, I, I usually tell you guys that I like drafting one of the top three tight ends within the first three rounds, Kelsey in the first or second, Ertz or Kittle in the, in the third. And I would have taken Ertz if he fell to me. I think he got sniped like one pick before... Um, one pick before... <laughs> what the fuck is... Animal talking about. Um, he got signed like one pick before me in the third round. But in the early round draft strategy video I made on Wednesday, I will probably not be taking. <laughs> Animal loves Hyde. It's ridiculous. Actually, Hyde in the 11th round is a really fucking good value. It's like he's not even moving up with Damian Williams suffering the hamstring stuff. Um, Hyde in the 11th round is good. I can't remember what I am. Oh, tight end. So the reason that I don't want to do that in season long, if Kittle or Ertz drop to the fourth, I'm okay with it. But the fact that running back depth is so small this year, great pick by Moisty. Yo, Moisty's racking up a lot of picks that I like here. Brita, all in on Brita. Do not ever take Jarek McKinnon. Um, the running back depth is so small that you need to use those early round picks on running backs. You can't use it. You can't use it on a tight end. Get Evan Ingram in the fifth, Hunter Henry in the sixth. Don't take Ertz or Kittle in the third when you can get... Uh, a Marlon Mack or an Aaron Jones or a Carrion Johnson or something like that. So we have five solid wide receivers. I'm probably going to stay away from wide receivers right now. Do we have any value at running back? Like I said, I will fade Lamar Miller at in the seventh round, exactly what just happened. And I will take Duke Johnson in the 11th or 12th round. I could probably even wait around, but I'm not going to get cute. I had no shares of Duke Johnson prior to this trade. Um, but now I'm starting to get him. I have so many mock drafts running right now. Look how many look how many drafts I have on draft. I don't know if you can see that, but I literally just start like four a day. So again, add me on here, and uh, and you will be invited to all of the drafts that open up. Um. Hey, we got that retweet from Evan Silva. So Evan Silva actually came onto our channel yesterday for Fade the Public. We talked about his new. Um, his new company established the run. We talked about him and Snacks' beef when it comes to the Giants. We talked about, obviously, some fantasy football hot takes. The the Ravens, the Patriots we dove into. So if you missed Evan Silva coming on the channel, that was pretty fucking cool. That was yesterday's video. Go check that out if you're new to the channel. And if you are, subscribe because we're hitting you with fucking big facts day in and day out. Every day leading up to your draft. I think I'm going to start putting out videos on Saturday too. Oh, speaking of, tomorrow is Saturday. Every Saturday, I do a private live stream for my Patreons. If you have any personal questions you want to ask me about your team, trades, waiver wire pickups, whatever, Patreon is where you could do that. If you sign up, you get access to my private weekly live streams, and uh, you'll be able to see them on YouTube afterwards, but that is where you should go. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, man, I'm about to clock out. Let's go with John Brown. He's running as he's running as the one. I like that pick with Devin Singletary a lot. I really do. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about, to be honest. So let's talk about some rookie running backs. Devin Singletary he's getting a lot of work with the ones. LaShawn McCoy is telling us he's the one. Um, Buffalo said they're starting Frank Gore in their first preseason game, which was, I believe, last night. Let's see. Let's look at the slates. What do we got up here for tonight's game? What are some things that I'm definitely looking out for? Doobie doop bop, deep bop, doop bop. That's my remix of a 50 Cent song. Colts Bills. Yeah, so I want to see Devin Singletary run tonight, baby. Uh, I also want to see Marlon Mack get 100% of the snaps with the first team. 
The Giants, we are looking forward to Daniel Jones. I love how low the over-unders are. Oh, man, I wish Monkey Knife Fight had some player props going during the preseason. We have uh, officially partnered up with Monkey Knife Fight, which is a phenomenal player prop um, game website, you want to say? We just keep tweeting at Evan Silva. I feel like he's just like, fuck these guys. I'll finally retweet it if they leave me alone. Um, where was I? Hmm, good pick with Kirk there. So, Monkey Knife Fight. Player props are going to uh, start up, I believe, when the NFL season starts. So, y'all should get in right now. We are partnered with them, but I use them personally. If you sign up and use promo code BDGE, you will get a 100% deposit match so if you throw $25 onto your account they will give you $25 on top of that to play with so if you're a baseball fan they have all these slates up tonight it's actually kind of fun I'm, I'll make one right now for you I literally don't follow baseball so I don't even know what I'm betting on right now so you guys can kind of fucking roast me in the comment section if you want let me make sure I'm not about to make a pick what did we see Trey Burton, who is dealing with some hernia injury or something, he's got to be off your draft board. Ronald Jones. and See, now the values are, are starting to align properly. I took Peyton Barber in the 10th. Ronald Jones is going at the end of the 12th. That is nice. Kirk Cousins, great value pick there. His floor is great, coming off a 30-touchdown season. I don't know why people are fading him so much. Jordan Reed. Oh, he's having the best summer of his life and feels 100%. I didn't realize uh, we were back in fucking 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018 again. Delaney Walker, nope. If you watched the video I did with the Fantasy Sports Network, we had someone from Inside Injuries, one of the best Twitter accounts to follow for injuries. I would go follow them now. Uh, Delaney Walker's broken ankle was more than just a broken ankle. There were ligament damages, so he is not going to be the old Delaney Walker. Don't pick Delaney Walker. Emmanuel Sanders, Mohamed Sanu. I like, I like that pairing right there, Scott. I'm not mad at you. I'm always mad at you, but for those picks, I'm not mad at you. Phillip Rivers, Devontae Parker. I'll oh, stop that. Good pick, TJ Hawkinson, Max. TJ Hawkinson is my favorite, like, best ball tight end in the 13th, 14th round. All right, so we're coming up to me right now. And if you look at my team, let's see. We're still, we're stacked at wide receiver. So I, I might end up, end up just sticking with six wide receivers that I have on my board. Um... Let's see what's left at quarterback, if there's any sort of value. Mm, I kind of hope Josh Allen falls to me. I don't have almost any shares of him. But I know he's a high ceiling player, so he's pretty nice to pair with a Rodgers in best ball. If I get an elite option like Rodgers or, you know, Luck or Watson or Mahomes or something, I usually only run with two quarterbacks on the roster. Everett, don't fucking do me dirty right now. Don't take Josh Allen. A sentence I never thought I would that would come out of my mouth. And I will probably... What tight end do I have? I have Eric Ebron. So I'll probably end up taking more than that at tight end. Uh, ooh. Okay, so I'm going to look at these other rosters and see what they have tight end. He already has one, so he might not pick a backup yet. He already has two, so he's definitely not going to pick a backup. So I feel comfortable letting Chris Herndon fall to me. I like, Dude, I like getting Chris Herndon. I know he's suspended for the first four games, but he's fallen all the way back to the 14th round now, and I absolutely love that as a value because I'm a big fan of him as like a sleeper. Obviously, the suspension hurts him a lot, but once he's back, like you have a prob you probably have a top twelve tight end in in Herndon sitting there on your roster. So um, pair that with Ebron, and I think you have a nice, consistent top twelve option week in and week out between those two. So hopefully, he falls back to me at the fourteen o tree. We're hearing a lot of hype out of Oakland uh, for Darren Waller, which I really, really, really like. You know, where there's smoke, there's fire with these with these reports. Um, and we've literally heard no negative reports out of Waller. Consistently beat reports, head coach, general manager, teammates. Waller is a playmaker. He is fitting that Jared Cook mold, and we saw how good Jared Cook was last year in this offense. Obviously, they added more pieces, and obviously, Darren Waller is not like a top breakout candidate. But listen, when you're getting him in the 14th, 15th round, like you can do worse. He's like the tight end 20 right now. So I think Darren Waller is a really good later round best ball tight end option. It was fun getting him in like the 18th round, but Tony Pollard is a good pick too. Um, if you're afraid of Zeke holding out, then Tony Pollard is probably a great late round pick for you in best ball drafts. We're going to grab Chris Herndon here. Back to monkey knife fight. So for any of y'all that know Yankees or a Blue Jays, I'm probably going to sound like a moron. Home run derby. 
No, we're going to stick to the over-under stuff. Domingo German, pitching strikeouts. This guy, I'm going under for you because you're trash. I'm going over for you. We're going to bet the whole fucking house on it. $10 buy-in, $26 prize. So this is all player prop games. Monkey Knife Fight is really fun. When the NFL starts, I'm going to do a segment every single week. Um, I'm going to do a segment every week with my best player prop games to choose. I'm going to help y'all win the mortgage, help y'all pay the mortgage. So get on monkeyknifefight.com. Whatever you deposit, use promo code BDGE, and they will match it for you. And we will do this together. We will win a lot of money together. Submit. Let's go. Let's go, Domingo. Oh, fuck. I'm in New York. God damn it. I forgot I signed up in New Jersey. Oh, wait. I thought they should let me go. State you're connecting from does not allow the site of action. Whatever. I, you got to be in the right state, I guess. When I go back to Jersey on Monday to film Fade the Public, I'll, I'll place my bets. But yeah, you obviously have to be in the right state. I think they're, uh, they probably go by DFS rules. So um, you have to be in the correct state. But once the NFL starts, you will be getting my best picks on Monkey Night Fight. So just sign up now. Save yourself some time is money, baby. Do it now and it's actually less money than doing it in September. That's fake news, but... You know, fuck it, just do it. Just do it. Okay, so what else we got to talk about? Rookie running backs, mulling on Miles Sanders. Every beat report is just going nuts about him. Clearly the best running back on the team. It's going to be his job before long. Devin Singletary also, I believe, it's going to be his job before long. They need to cut either. There we go, Scott. Scott's finally learning, man. Marquise Brown, interesting. Rookie wide receivers, I tend to stay away from them, especially ones where Lamar Jackson's throwing them the ball. So, Miles Boykin and... Actually, you know, I've taken, I've taken Hollywood Brown in, uh, in like the 15th, 16th round in a, few, in a few, uh, few drafts because he's such a big playmaker that I'm sure he'll have his weeks in best ball. Oh, God, guys. Like, Rear Admiral, you are just making some asinine picks today, huh? You're really going to pick a guy on your best ball team that's going to miss eight weeks? You only have 18 players on your roster. Like, every player that you don't have for certain weeks is going to is going to put you at a big disadvantage. So I am not drafting players that are going to miss significant time. You know, 6, 8, 10 games. Who knows? Right after I said that for Chris Herndon. But tight end position is very, very, very shallow. So, um, so I'm okay with Chris Herndon because it's only four games. It's not eight games like Kareem Hunt. Deontay Foreman. I got a lot of questions as soon as Deontay Foreman signed with the Colts. Is Deontay Foreman a worry for me when it comes to Marlon Mack? Literally, he's negative percent. Deontay Foreman was just cut from the Texans. He's coming off the Achilles injury. And uh, he was one of three players on Dr. Morse's do not draft list this year. It was Leonard Fournette, Deontay Foreman. I'm not going to tell you the third one. You have to get the draft guide if you want the third one. But Fournette, you know, they said he wasn't working hard. He's out of shape. He's unconditioned. Like, nothing good. I, I would be... I would actually be more surprised if Deontay Foreman made the Colts than I would if he didn't make the Colts. I would, like, I think he'll probably get cut. He's going to battle with Jordan Wilkins as the backup or, like, the, the, the thick back that is a breather back for Marlon Mack. But this is Mack's down, backfield to absolutely own. Deontay Foreman has literally no effect on uh, the way I see this backfield playing out. So... So... I'm almost up. We have two quarterbacks already. Did I grab a second quarterback? Yeah, I got Josh Allen. We have two tight ends. Uh, I'll probably grab a third tight end only because Herndon's going to miss the first three weeks, but I'm not going to do that until later in the draft. Who else do we have on the board that we don't hate? There is not a lot of depth at running back, huh? But I don't hate Mike Davis. I don't hate Darwin Thompson. I like Malcolm Brown here. I'm a, I'm a big Malcolm Brown guy in the 15th, 16th round of these best ball drafts because I am not buying Todd Gurley whatsoever. I think this becomes a committee eventually. If Todd Gurley suffers a knee injury, if that arthritis pops up early on in the season, you're probably going to get a Mark Ingram type role from Malcolm Brown really early. They've said over, they're, they're telling you, right, with Dor- Dorrell Henderson, they're like, we want to use him in a pass catching role. They're saying it over and over and over again. They're not lying to you. They're telling you that he's going to be used in a pass catching capacity. He's not going to be the workhorse if something happens to Gurley. So I'm a fan of Malcolm Brown here. I like Darwin Thompson too, but they are talking about um, if they don't use Damian Williams. I believe the report came out today that Damian Williams is someone, one of the beat reporters said Damian Williams is likely to be in a, um, 
in a running back by committee. I think I saw that on Twitter, maybe. Let me see if I can pull that up. Oh, Deonta Foreman. Guys, that's such that's a really bad best ball pick. Don't waste any capital on Deonta Foreman, please. Please, I'm begging you. Baby, please don't go. If I wake up tomorrow, will you still be here? All right. We're probably still looking at more running backs because we went so wide receiver heavy up front that I'm not really going to need depth. Jamal Williams, nope. He's missed all of summer with a hamstring injury, I believe. Dexter Williams takes a spot. Chris Thompson, I don't hate in that Washington backfield as the pass catcher. I am a little nervous about him staying healthy, though. Mike Davis is a guy that I really, really, really find myself taking a lot of in best ball. I like David Montgomery a lot, but I, I, I think Mike Davis, I don't know. I don't want it to happen. I want David Montgomery to be like the, the workhorse there, but something in my gut just keeps telling me Mike Davis is going gonna, is gonna to eat into this and, and have a good year, especially if something happens to DeMont, which I don't know why that would happen, but... Go to monkeyknifefight.com. Use promo code BDGE. Help me pay the bills. Help me pay the mortgage. Help me stay putting out content for y'all. Another way you could do that is by just hitting a thumbs up on this button. I love you. Um, Andy Reid appeared on Sirius XM training camp tour and said to expect in a running back by committee in the Chiefs backfield this season. Along with Damian Williams, he pointed out the play of Darrell Williams and also mentioned Carlos Hyde. Darrell Williams is a name to keep monitored. Is a name to monitor. Did that make sense? Is this him? Darrell D. Williams? Why the fuck you got to throw him? That definitely ain't him. He ain't a 6'5", 300-pound running back. Uh, where art thou? Is this him? No, this can't be fucking him either. How do you spell his name? Am I spelling his name wrong? What the fuck? No, I'm not spelling it wrong. You're spelling it wrong. I'm not a cop. You're a cop. You're a narc. This is making me angry. Ah, it's one L. You know what? That's fucking on you, Jeff Ratcliffe. You spelled it with two L's. So, six foot two twenty five. 69th percent college target share. This is a guy to, to monitor. He slows a motherfucker, 472. But in Dynasty Leagues, bro, you never know. Because Carlos Hyde sucks too. I can't wait till Carlos Hyde gets cut. An animal is to fucking cry on live television. That's going to be good times. Good times in the dungeon. Um, so Damian Williams, yes, is becoming a very, 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 very risky. Do I buy into the coach speak of Andy Reid saying it's going to be a running back by committee? I don't know. I think if Damian, if Damian Williams is healthy, right, the hamstring is a big concern. We said it, we always say as soon as it do, uh, an August hamstring pull almost got, puts a guy off my board, almost on my do not draft list. Um, this could be a way to just kind of infuse um, Damian Williams with some inspiration because Damian Williams, all offseason, they've been saying it's Damian Williams' job. The front office, the coaches, everybody is just like, it's Damian Williams' job. He is the featured back. He is the starter here. And now all of a sudden, Andy Reid is saying that. So I feel like it might be to put a spark in him. But I also feel like it might not be. Who knows? So uh, he's becoming one of the riskiest early round running back picks. And I will probably be avoiding him anywhere near the second round. Damn it, Moisty, you snipe me a fucking again. Jalen Richard, I wanted him. Um, who do we got? Wow, the running back situation is disgusting. Dude, I like this kid, Brian Hill, from the Falcons. Did someone snipe him already? If you guys watch the Hall of Fame game... Ooh, there he goes! There's my boy! I like that pick with Randall Cobb, too. I really do. I think he's going to have some good weeks. I'm going to go with Brian Hill, man. I think he takes that secondary job from Edel Smith, and I think Brian Hill becomes kind of a savage this year. He runs hard. He has good size. Brian Hill. If you take the starting job, I will drag... F U two twenty six one four five four forty yard dash. He taking that job from Edo Smith. He really is. Um, so preseason games are on tonight. I think there's twelve games or something. In the Big Dogs Got to Eat Bible in my draft guide, BigDogsDraftGuide.com, which you can cop right now every week. This is going to be the best article that you'll read all summer. 
strategy how to attack your draft but i will be updating it every single week after each preseason game the article itself is more strategy based but every week this preseason updated article piece will be very player focused talking about who took snaps with the first team talking about who is rising and falling on draft boards this will be very helpful i really really suggest that you go cop the big dogs draft guide at bigdogsdraftguide.com i really suggest that you come draft your ass with me on draft.com use promo code bdge for three dollars to draft with the fuck is this i got some cocaine on my straw i'm just kidding it's splenda they're both good though um so i have seven running backs i don't think i've actually made a team like this before I could take another wide receiver. Dude, I kind of like Ted Ginn. Everyone's getting excited about Traquan Smith, but Ted Ginn is still the fucking second guy. And Traquan Smith was running with the twos, apparently, behind Keith Kirkwood. This is my final pick, though, and I probably have to get another tight end because I don't trust Ebron and Chris Herndon, who's out for four games. Mike Kosicki, man, fuck that. I'm off Mike Kosicki. Give me Gerald Everett. Give me Gerald. He's, like, too good and too strong and too fast not to be good eventually in this offense. I also think Cooper Cup is, is coming back from his injury too early. Or he won't, at least he won't be healthy, like as healthy as a lot of people think. At least during the early parts of the season. So I think these tight ends, and specifically Everett, will be a bigger part of this offense. So, um, I believe that's my final team. Alright, so here's what we got. Oh god, I hate these running backs. Y'all can roast me in the comments if you want. But if you're going to do that while you're down there, at least hit that thumbs up button. Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen at quarterback. I like that stack. Running back, we have Devonta Freeman, Mark Ingram, Peyton Barber, the God, Duke Johnson, now on the Texans, Malcolm Brown, Mike Davis, Brian Hill. I'm going to need one of these three running backs to hit. Wide receivers, ooh, Odell, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Dante Pettis, Corey Davis, John Brown. That is beautiful. Ooh, I like that Josh Allen, John Brown stack. How we doing, Buffalo? Bills Nation. Bills Mafia. I can't believe I just said Bills Nation. That's fucking disrespectful to all of the football world. Me, Snacks, and Animal will be attending the Giants home opener against the Bills. So, Bills Mafia, if you are in Big Dog Nation, get your fucking asses down to New Jersey. Get to MetLife Stadium. Week two of the NFL season. We're going to open up a ridiculous tailgate for that game. Bills Mafia. Giants Nation. Big Dog Nation. XXX. Let's fucking go. Josh Allen is going to connect with John Brown for a 90-yard touchdown that week, and I'm going to win fucking best ball leagues because of it. Who else we got? Tight end, Gerald Everett, Chris Herndon, and Eric Ebron. Uh, I don't love this team, I would say, but I also don't hate it. So that's going to wrap up this team. That's also going to wrap up this draft. Again, if you want to draft with me or if you just want to practice drafting for your draft, there is no better place to do it than draft.com. Draft.com slash B-D-G-E. Promo code B-D-G-E. $3 to draft with Edge your boy Nick Ercolano on there, and I will send you an invite to a draft when I open it up. That's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you tomorrow on the Patreon live stream, whether you're a Patron or not. I will upload it to YouTube afterwards. But if you are a Patron, you get to be the one asking me the questions. I love you all. Enjoy your weekend. Hope you have a fabulous one, and I hope last night's games were fucking Fire, Scott, who are you taking? Mo Ali Cox with the last pick. I like that. I like that. We out of here. Goodbye.